Well, here we are, we're moving right along in chapter 10. Now we're gonna talk about percent yields. And this might be a concept that you haven't heard before, but it's pretty simple, really. And that is if you were, let's say, doing an experiment where you were gonna synthesize a certain molecule or you worked for a pharmaceutical company or a chemical company that had to make a certain product, what you'll quickly find is that the actual yield is less than the theoretical yield. In other words, what you get is less than what you thought you would get in the experiment. So there's a couple of reasons for that. It's the reactions might be impure, okay? The reactants, you might have started with impure chemicals and that may have caused your reaction to go uh, poorly. You may not have let the reaction go for long enough. Maybe it was a slow reaction and you needed to wait for that reaction to complete and you were maybe impatient and you didn't wait. And so your yield of products is less than you would expect. Or maybe even in this reaction, other side products formed in your final batch of material. And so of course, if you work for a pharmaceutical company or a chemical company, you need to purify and get rid of those side reactants before you'd be able to sell your drug or sell your chemical on the market. And so what I'm saying here that our theoretical yield it's what we're predicting based on our stoichiometric calculations that we learned before, converting grams to grams, okay? So that would be considered our theoretical yield, which we'll see in a second. And then our actual yield is what we actually got after we did the experiment. Okay, so your actual yield then is experimentally determined, right? You're gonna get some product after your chemical reaction and you could just weigh it on a balance here and obtain its mass, okay? And then you can compare that actual yield, right? With the theoretical yield, right? You can divide the actual yield by the theoretical yield and times a hundred, and that will give us the percent yield, okay? It's this ratio of the actual yield to the theoretical yield, okay? And it's really useful for understanding how well a reaction went, right? You can think of it, I guess, kind of like a test score. Um, the theoretical yield is all the points available on the test and the actual yield is how well you did on the test. So again, this is a way that chemists and people who were working in these industries might be able to figure out how well they did and if certain reactions need improvement. So it's an important concept. So let's just do an example problem. I think it's pretty easy once we start doing some example problems to understand what we mean by percent yields and how we solve these types of problems. So in this example problem, it says a solution containing 3.18 grams of barium chloride is added to a second solution containing excess sodium sulfate. And then our product is barium sulfate, it precipitates. So in part A, we'll just start there. We wanna calculate the theoretical yield of barium sulfate. Well, like we saw before at the beginning of chapter 10, this chapter brings a lot of concepts from other chapters. So first we need to be able to write out the chemical equation for what's going on here. And so I'm just gonna do that because I'm assuming you've had plenty of practice. So we have barium chloride plus sodium sulfate gives me barium sulfate plus sodium chloride, and it's crucial that we balance the chemical equation. And also remember that, just as a side note, each one of these um, formula units has to be net neutral in its charge. So you can look at your ion chart to see the charge of barium, of sulfate ion, of the sodium ion, the chloride ion. And then like we learned in that chapter, crisscross the charges to make sure that the formula units here are net neutral. And that's how I came up with what I wrote here. All right. So this is what we're given. And we're going to start with, right, we're going to use dimensional analysis or stoichiometry, I could say. We're given 3.18 grams of barium chloride. And I want grams of barium sulfate, okay? So we're gonna use exactly what we did in the last two videos in chapter 10 to solve this problem, okay? So I'll write that here, okay? 
So we're going to go, I'll write my path. How about that? One, eight grams, barium chloride. Remember, we want to go to moles. Let me just move my little screen here. Barium chloride to moles, barium sulfate to grams, barium sulfate. Okay. And remember in between to do this, we use the molar mass of the compounds. Okay. So I'll write it now underneath here. So 3.18 grams of barium chloride times I'm not going to solve for the molar mass here. I'm going to run out of room, but you could look on the periodic table and find it, or you can even Google it. But for now, but of course, on a test, you would want to show that work of how you calculated the molar mass. So I got 208.23 grams barium chloride, one mole barium chloride times. This is the mole ratio here from the chem balanced chemical equation, it's one to one. So one mole barium chloride, okay. One mole barium sulfate, okay. And then finally, one mole barium sulfate. Again, remember, if you know the pattern that we learned before, this pattern is gonna keep coming back. So it's really important, 2.33, Oh, 233.35 grams barium sulfate. This is the molar mass of barium sulfate. Okay, so again, just check your units here. Grams of barium chloride cancel out with grams of barium chloride, moles of barium chloride, with moles of barium chloride, moles of barium sulfate, with moles of barium sulfate, and we're left with grams of barium sulfate, which is what we want. Okay, so I get, when I put all this in my calculator, three... 0.56 grams barium sulfate. Okay, so this is part A here. This is my theoretical yield, okay? So this is my theoretical yield of what I would predict I would get in this reaction, okay, of barium chloride and sodium sulfate given the amount of barium chloride that I started with. All right, so I'll let you just kind of write that down for now. And then I'm gonna erase a little bit and make some more room for me so I can write. So you can pause the video too and write that down. Okay, so again, this is my theoretical yield, just going from mass to mass stoichiometry calculation. Okay, which is what we learned, I believe in the last video. All right, so I'm gonna erase here. So just to make some more room for me. Okay. Okay. So now let's do part B. Okay. So B, we want to calculate the percent yield. Okay. So that's easy. It's the actual yield, which is what we got 3.37 grams right, given right here, divided by what we just calculated, 3.56 grams, okay, so this is actual, over the theoretical, times 100, and when I do that, I get approximately 94.7%. Okay, so it's a fairly good reaction actually. So this is my percent yield. So like I said, percent yield problems are easy. They're basically exactly what we just did, all right, in mass to mass stoichiometry problems. But now we're just adding this final step where we take the actual yield, which you're gonna be given in a problem. You divide it by your theoretical yield, you times that by 100 and you get the percent yield per reaction, okay? So that's it for this video. Now we're gonna be going on to limiting reactants in the next video. So I'll see you there.